Hello Youtubers and Ashe I'm welcoming you very much to my witchy hole the second Well, I just came back from a pagan festival You know, the Marvel festival is the only pagan festival of Israel as of yet And there I sold the store, you know, some of my very own concoctions And some of the creations of my beautiful sister Nicole That does all sorts of uh, goddess pendants and such And Afterwards, you know, when I met her and gave her the money uh, that she earned from the festival, uh, we did a little shopping, you know, because we needed to celebrate and waste some of that money. So I wanted to show you what I got from the festival and what what else is like, you know, useful. First of all, uh, the obvious. This is a beautiful necklace made by one called Toshu Kovesa. Basically, you know, she bought those images, you know, those turquoise images from, you know, places that call it, I assume, China, okay? And this is like natural, natural necklace with turquoise beads, and I especially like this turquoise turtle thingy. And those are like, and this is an important addendum, this, those are like olive tree beads. You know, that represents the connection of the goddess religion and whatever to Israel. I love this so much. This is going to be, you know, one of my uh, uh, manja uh, ritual necklaces now. Okay, so this is the first thing I got. And I bought it for it. I gave some of my concoctions, some of my ingredients away for this. And I'm very happy with it. The second thing she did, she, that I bought it for, was this. A handmade... Let me try. Porcelain goddess, okay? That is like flat on the other side. It's made for hanging and it's signed, okay? I know you can't say it because it's all white, but it's signed. And she would sell this for um, 50 shekels. 50 shekels are like um, 10, 11, 12 dollars. I don't know. It's like I'm telling you prices because. I want you to tell me if this is considered to be more expensive or cheaper in the US, you know, for a handmade stuff like that. And this one, she also had this a goddess making workshop and I made this one, okay? This is like a goddess of beauty, you can hang this too. I'm going to color this with, uh, with green and gold and beautiful things and put it in my ocean corner, okay? So I'm going to, say that I'm going to have those. I made this handmade and I know I'm not very proficient in making but I would like to hear what you think about what I made anyway okay so those are the things I got you know you know and I bought another thing I'm sorry I have a bag here another artist of the pagan community uh, made those made this this is hand painted okay of three witches in the cauldron and I'm going to frame that because I really am a cauldron lover person. I, I use it. I cook potions in it. I actually made a sweep spray and I sold it and it sold very well in the festival. I still have a bunch of it, but you know, and it came out beautiful uh, purple black purification spray that you spray around the house from and take away all the negative energy. I love cauldrons and you know, those three witches, this congrega this meeting of witches. I really like this theme and this was like really the only thing I liked that this artist made because usually I don't really like her stuff but this this was special so this is a collector piece for my other artist that were in the that is and are and war in the pagan community in Israel that I'm getting into my room so those are the things I basically bought and now the was some stuff that I found okay first of all let me show you this I hope I can show this to you properly, okay? Those are dead bees that drowned in the, wa in the washer water, in the washing water of the festival. And I'm like, may I have those? You know, because those are sacred to a shoe, okay? And I can use them, you know, to represent her warrior side and her protective and fear side. So those are now spread out to dry so I could like, you know, put them in a bottle and I'm trying not to touch them so no, anything will not get inside of me uh, for, for, you know, by mistake. So I'm drying those. 
uh, I also, you know, we won the festival. The festival was in um, a permaculture college uh, in the outskirts of Tel Aviv. And, you know, there were so many wonderful herbs there. There were like canary and pine and I, you know, and I thought, and, and they were like, you know, um, and, and there was uh, lemongrass and there was lavender and sage and hyssop and I'm like, you know, and you know, people are sitting around this and you know, like this huge bush of lavender and I'm like, why am I not making a smudge stick out of it? So, you know, I took a string and I took some scissors that people have lying around and I make some smudge sticks. And I said to myself that next year I'm going to make a smudge sticks workshop. You know, it's simple. I usually, you know, I usually like to go and do the grotesque and heavy. Like, you know, this year I made a workshop about voodoo dolls, how they walk, how they operate. And, you know, I brought like worldwide voodoo dolls, like a Kokeshi doll from Japan and stuff like that. But this year, next year, I'm going to do something a whole lot simpler. I'm going to teach people there is more to life than sage, okay? Because the pagan community in Israel is like sage, 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 okay? Purify me with sage. So I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to do something a bit else. Also, in the ritual in which you called Baal and Asherah to rain on us, um, the priestess used cotton. This is the season of cotton, and she used cotton. She was about to throw this away to the compost heap. You know, the cotton that she used to empower in 70 uh, participant ritual, one of the major and largest ritual ever occurring in Israel. And I'm like, no, 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 stop! I need those! And cotton, you know, it's used for all sorts of things, like, uh, you know, pain removing, inflammation removing, but also it's a very magical herb in Yoruba tradition. It's protective from witchcraft and malevolent forces. And I'm going, and I'm letting this dry because it got a little bit wet. And then I'm going to use that for, uh, you know, my magic. Now, I, I forgot to bring here my smudge stick. I'm sorry, I'm really doing this from my mother's room. I don't have a computer in my room. I hate it, it disturbs my vibes. I like my room to be like as natural as possible and not having like computers and machinery lying around. I can barely stand my cell phone there, so. But I made like a meter long smart stick made out of lavender leaf. And this smells a whole lot better than the sage ones in my opinion, okay? so. That was very nice. Okay, now when I was with Nicole again, okay, uh, we went to. Uh, we decided that we are in the mood for some Oriental food, so we went to an Oriental food store, and you know we bought stuff, and we didn't pay a whole lot because we like sales. You know, I got some um, udon noodles. I, I'm I'm a bitch for Japanese food. I really love Japanese food. Got some noodles, I got some, you know, bean noodles and stuff like that. But across the street there was like spices, healing herbs and more. And I was like, okay, Nicole, if we're here, it's about time we go there because I ran out completely of benzoin and I really need some benzoin. And I hope that, you know, it's an Arab store. So I hope they have something else that is not just frankincense. And we got inside and I got myself some stuff. So. Oh, and in that, that oriental shop, I bought this jumbo jasmine incense. It's really big, okay? And I got, you know, this freakish pink incense that I left at Nicole's. They both, you know, they both smell really good and, and they're from India and uh, they are not uh, cat pee smelling. Yes, I got that in the amber. Uh, anyway. So first of all, in that Arab spice shop, I got myself some uh, juniper berries, and this I keep aside for my uh, for my uh, um <coughs> sorry for my uh, um, Buddhist friend. You know, I said that I have Tibetan Buddhists, and they use juniper a lot for their incense of purification and devotion and stuff. So I got some of that, and I got this backload of cinnamon stick. Notice this is the bark, the outer bark, which is like very hard and full of essential oils. It's less abrasive than the center and it came with its like original bamboo wrapping thing. But you know, during the ride, it, it was cracked, but during the ride it like exploded. But this is a whole lot of cinnamon and I don't need to tell you people what cinnamon is good for. It's good for a whole lot of things. Uh, I also found 
and this is like amazingly rare this is bitter uh, watermelon bitter watermelon grows in the Negev desert and I've been reading about it and its usages since Roman time you know to heal your back and stuff and this is very good this is a very good item and it is an ingredient in many things some of them I will not say here but you know I like to go local when I can okay but I like to go local and this is like a bitter melon that people really used here in, in like traditional medicine and it's like abortive also it's like you could actually go and make an, abo uh, make an abortion with one of those babies here and I found that and I never found that okay now there was like this moment this really funny and nice moment in the shop where Nicole is like um, I need Galengal and I'm like the hell I'm going to say now Galengal because it has this different nobody really buys this in Hebrew nobody really uses this to season anything in Hebrew and I, I try to remember its Arab name because I have like books, I have amazing books which are like the name of it in Latin, the, the name of it in, you know, hair books the name in Latin, the name in English, the name in Hebrew and then you know there is the name in Arabi Arabic and you, you like, if you go to those stores it's very good to bring this book because you c not native speakers are very difficult in pronouncing Arabic properly so and I'm like, you know, and I, I didn't bring my book, I didn't plan to go to that store, so I was like, what was its name, what was its name, then, oh my god, Ganga now is Hulinjan, yes, Hulinjan, okay, how did I remember that, goddess knows, but I remember that, and she took her Hulinjan, and also, they have like this local white helichrysum, okay, and you know, helichrysum is also good for meditation and the healing wounds and stuff. And that was another good thing there. Now, I also ordered from the internet. I didn't find this in any bookstore, but I found it in like the book week in Israel. This. It's called Ethiopia in Israel, and this is medicine and traditional, uh, traditional um, uh, medication of the Ethiopian people. Okay, and it's by Dikladina and Zohar Amar, and Zohar Amar is a very famous researcher of, uh, of traditional medicine, and he is a big help for all the witches here, because, you know, he lists all the herbs and all the stores that you can get those herbs from, and, you, you know, he tells you the traditional names, you know, and, and stuff, like, for instance, this is like a traditional Ethiopian medicine book that is called would one next okay and and stuff in it so so we have those in hebrew we have those in hebrew and even though it costs me more than a hundred shekels this is a really valuable addition to my helpers in my collection because it's not only tells me what that stuff does you know physically it all those properties can all also be used like magically if something is used like for instance uh, is it uh, something that causes you diarrhea you can use it for purification and stuff so you know and all those herbs that I don't know that are, they exist only in Ethiopian shops that now I have access to okay so this is like you know the jewel of my uh, witchcraft uh, uh, hole that I got from the internet and I'm very happy with it okay thank you and goodbye youtubers we shall speak again Ashe.